Today I'm going to show you how to create this t-shirt design in Adobe Illustrator. So here we are inside of Illustrator and the artboard that I'm using is 450 pixels wide and 540 pixels high. If you want to follow along exactly, you can copy those dimensions. That is quite a small size. However, because it's all vector format in Illustrator, we can just export this design afterwards at a way larger size. So I'm going to export this at 4,500 pixels and 5,400 pixels in height. And the color scheme over here, you can copy that as well if you want. You don't have to use it. You could just take a screenshot of it right now, then paste it into your Illustrator document or whatever software you're working with. And then you can typically use the eyedropper tool in which you can access by hitting I on your keyboard as well and just sample these colors from this screenshot as well. The first step to creating our design is just typing out our phrase. And in this case, you can use lots of different things. This works well for trends. It works world for evergreen niches. We don't have to use my example. I'm going to do summer vacay mode on. And when I type out these phrases, I usually try and put the words underneath one another, but have them sort of fairly similar in terms of their width. And then the next step is aligning this to center over here. That will make life easier. And I'll change the font to abstract groovy, which is a really nice looking groovy font, and it is free for commercial use. And if you want to use the same font here, I will leave a download link to it in the description. And now I want to make sure that all of these words are the same in terms of their size or in terms of their width, I should say. So a quick tip right here is using guides. You can draw out these guides if you have your rulers enabled, which you can see on the top on the left hand side right here. You can enable these by hitting control R on your keyboard. So I've, I've just turned them off right there. If you can't see them and you hit control R, they should appear for you. And now you can just click onto the rulers and drag out a guide like so. I'm going to align this with the edge of the, the letter S right here for the word summer and just let go. As you can see, it has drawn a line there. I'll do the same for the letter R over here, draw out another guide. And now we can have an easier time just making these words the same width. So I'm going to use the word VK right here, just increase the font size to make it match our guides. And same at the bottom. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, by the way, but just so you get roughly there. So I think that does the job. Now we just have to sort out the leading, which is the spacing in between the different lines right here. So if we select all of the text and head over to the character window, in case you don't see this, by the way, you have to go to window all the way down to type. And here you will find the character option. So tick this and this box should appear. So the leading is this option over here. If we turn this down, as you can see, it's going to decrease, but it's, it's still going to leave a bit of a gap right here for mode on, just by the nature of that font size being smaller. So in order to fix that, just use the type tool. So hit T on your keyboard, select just mode on, and then go and configure the leading again, and it is only going to move this one. So do that until you've got the words sort of evenly spaced out in terms of the leading, and then we're ready to start coloring this in. So let's just start off with the first purple color right here. The dark brown is going to be used for the shadow. So I'm going to sample this with the eyedropper tool, then click into the color field right here and copy the hex code. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and select the type tool again and just color in a few individual letters like this. You want to mix it up, not have the same color too closely together. I sometimes like to group similar looking colors like these two purples right here or the greens at the bottom. But overall, you want to get some variety in terms of the positioning of these colors. So let's just start with this U, for example, I'll click into this color field and change it by just pasting in with control V, pasting in the hex code at the bottom. So we've got that letter colored in. Let's do the A, because that's quite far away from that U. I wouldn't, for example, have colored in the V, because that's too close. And now we could do the D right here for, for the word mode. And I think that's enough for the purple. Let's move on to the next color. Just follow that process along with all the different colors in your color scheme until you've finished coloring this in. Once you're done with that, the next step is adding the shadow, this sort of 3D shadow effect around this so it is more readable. And if you want to use the same color scheme, just copy the hex code for this dark brown. So go into that, hit Control C, and then you want to select your text and head over to the appearance panel. Once you've found that, you want to add a new stroke by clicking this symbol at the bottom and then drag your stroke layer underneath 
the characters because the characters are your letters. So now we can change this by holding down shift and left clicking onto this box, change this hex code right here to our brown, hit enter and increase the stroke weight slightly. So make it about uh, four pixels for now. Might have to change that in a minute. But essentially what we want to do is we want to give this a bit more of a 3D effect by heading over to effects, going to distort and transform and then select transform. Then this window will open up and you will want to add a bit on here for the horizontal and vertical movement. So let's just start off with one pixel for each. That does look quite nice. So let's just go with that for now. I'm quite happy with that. So you could also copy this stroke over, just hide the transform and, and make this a bit smaller like so. Just make a bit of an adjustment. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but as you can see, it gives you some, some additional stroke right here on the top and bottom whilst you can also play around with the transform option right here. If you want it to be a bit more extreme like this, for example, and then you've got it quite a bit more 3D, but it's still readable because it has that extra stroke along the top. So open right there to play around with that. Just use the appearance panel because that way it's not destructive and you can still edit this text later. And that's actually the, the next tip I've got for you is once you're done with this, just uh, copy this over out of the artboard. So select your text, hit alt on your keyboard, and that's going to duplicate it. So you can can still change this in future if you've got a different sentence. You can even do that after we've got the envelope distort applied. So I'll show you that first because that is the next step. So um, let's click on this text and make it more wavy, give it that groovy feel even more. So once you've got it selected, head over to object, envelope distort, and then click make with warp. Now the default is arc, which looks terrible, <laughs> at least for this design. And we're going to select wave instead. So the default I've got right here is 50%, which is a bit extreme. And let's turn this down a bit. And you can actually see now that we're getting some gaps right here with these letters. So that's something we don't want. If you're getting the same result, I would suggest just turning down the transform bit. So um, let's change this to 1.5 pixels instead. That might work better and let's head back to object envelope distort transform make with warp and change this to wave again so now those little white gaps are gone so that just gives you an example of sometimes you run into problems and you have to just go back a step and adjust your settings so um, let's just go with um, about 40 percent right here i think that looks good hit okay and you can once again duplicate this over to the side and you can still edit this afterwards and um, if you wanted to the text that is this is a quick tip by clicking the edit contents button up here. So if you click this, it will let you use the type tool again and change these letters whilst the wave effect is still applied. For example, if we wanted to change these words around, you'd have to do it letter by letter because of the color scheme. I mean, I'm not actually writing a word now. I just want to show you how this works. Click out of this, there we go. So it's got the, uh, the effect applied once again and the color scheme. So that's why we want to save that to the side right there. So we don't have to start from scratch with the next design or the next phrase. So keep that saved. And whenever you're done with editing the actual text, you can go back to edit envelope if you want to make changes to the envelope distort settings as well. Before we carry on with this tutorial, I wanted to introduce you to Skillshare who very kindly sponsored this video today. And Skillshare, in case you didn't know, are an online learning platform and they have loads of really good high quality classes on there that will help you discover new skills. And I actually use Skillshare myself at the start of my print on demand journey when I learned how to use Illustrator and Photoshop properly. That is something I can recommend to anyone because some of my best-selling designs are not something that I copied through a YouTube tutorial. They are designs that I created from scratch with Illustrator and Photoshop and that is thanks to the skills that I learned from Skillshare classes. And the best thing is the first 1,000 people to follow the link in the description can join Skillshare for free for an entire month and that way you could access to all of their courses which is really really great. So you can try out design courses whether using Illustrator, Photoshop or another the design tool, you can find something on there. Shimmy Morris has also got a three hour print and demand course on Skillshare. I had him on my podcast recently, so that's definitely worth checking out. And also something that I'm going to look into further in the future is marketing. So different ways to promote your products, your t-shirts, such as Instagram, Pinterest marketing that can help any print and demand seller out with getting more sales, driving more traffic. So definitely tons and tons of options. There's some ideas for you to check out. And remember the first 1000 people 
people to follow the link can join Skillshare for an entire month for free. The next phase for our design is adding some decorative elements to make it look more interesting, more summery. And um, what people like to add here usually are things like flowers, stars, that sort of stuff. So let's just create a few from scratch with Illustrator because we've got that power. So for flowers, I would just go ahead and select the ellipse tool over here. You can also click L on your keyboard to select that. And then I'm not going to draw out a perfect circle. Instead, I want to have quite an oval egg shape, sort of like this. You can let go and then to rotate this around to form a flower, we can use the rotate tool. So select that from your toolbar or hit R on your keyboard. And then a quick tip right here is hold down Alt on your keyboard and then just click on the outside anchor point you will get this rotate window pop up. And if you type in an angle like 60 degrees in my case, then as you can see, the preview is going to angle this that way. And if we hit copy and then control D continuously on our keyboard, it's going to repeat that process and we'll have a perfect geometric flower shape. Next step is just selecting all of these objects and hitting G to group them. And now I'm going to select the ellipse tool again and just create a normal round circle in the middle to create the center of the flower. So let's just select white right here so we can see what's going on and center this by double clicking on the actual X shapes right here. And then we can horizontally align it to the center of flower. So that already looks good for a start. Let's also actually create a bit of a stroke effect around this. So quick way to do that is first of all, we want to use the pathfinder window to unite all of these shapes. So use the first option right here, unite to combine the outside of a flower, then go to object path, offset path, and then you want to decrease this a bit and maybe to about three pixels, four pixels, something along those lines. So you've got an additional shape around the outside. Now I'm going to use the brown for the stroke for the outside and then just uh, one of our sort of pastel colors right here. Let's go for the pink. And there we go. We've got a flower that we can easily size down and sort of scatter around our design. I would recommend just creating a few variations. First of all, it's going to be easier if we have this grouped. So hit control G on your keyboard while having everything selected and create a few variations with different colors. So we'll use the eyedropper tool. We will sample one of the colors right here. So sample this green, for example, hold down Alt on your keyboard to then paste it onto one of the flowers. And then you've got an easy life when you want to fill out this design with nice looking flowers. So there we go. We've got a bit of variety and that is the first item that we can use and paste onto these letters. Another thing you can do is you can create a star. So we'll use the star tool. That makes it a lot easier. Just draw out a star shape like this, if you hold down shift and alt, it is uh, going to make this very geometric star. If you let go of those, it's a bit more rounded, which I think suits this design better. You could also, uh, in fact, use the direct selection tool and give this a bit of a round edge like this. That would be quite neat because, I mean, the font we're using is completely round everywhere. So you want to try and match that vibe a bit with the decorative elements as well, just to make it feel more coherent. And uh, now, once again, we'll just uh, use the object path and offset path function again to create another shape around that for the stroke sample the brown we can sample that from the flowers up here for the star you could actually just make this white as well and there we go now we've got another decorative element make sure to actually group this with Control g once again because if you're moving it around if you're pasting it around right here that's going to make life a lot easier so all you want to do is just paste that onto various letters don't obscure the letters don't make it really big uh, so you can't actually read what's going on but just Putting it into the corners of some of these letters definitely makes for a nice effect. Same goes for the flowers and I tend to put these onto sort of opposing colors. So we've got purple and green right here. I wouldn't place this purple flower onto a purple letter because it doesn't stand out very well. So that is part of my sort of thought process as well. You don't have to do it exactly like me, but I'm just giving you some examples as to how you can create this design. So put one up here for the yellow and we could put one of the purple ones perhaps on this green letter over here. So you want to do that. You don't want to fill out everything and make it completely clustered with tiny little flowers. 
but having a few of these every now and then definitely makes for a nice effect. So there we go, that's a nice start. And the last shape I want to create to help fill out some of the gaps in between the letters is this one right here. And I'm not sure what to call it, but essentially you can create this very quickly with the ellipse tool again. So I'm going to select that from the toolbar and draw out a bit of a an egg shape again. So not a perfect circle, kind of like this. I'll deselect the stroke and then while holding down Alt, click onto this egg, just copy it over and hold down shift as well so it stays in line. And you want these to be touching on the sides right there. So it helps having, if you go to view, it helps having smart guides enabled. That will help you a lot. Now we'll select both of these, draw them down once again with alt and holding down shift until they are aligned at the bottom, until the edges are aligned like this. And as you can tell, now we've got our shape in the middle of these. So you can select all of these and then use the shape builder tool over here. Here. select that in the toolbar and then click on the center that will create a new shape with this negative space and then you can just erase everything around that shape that we created originally so as you can see that's quickly created this little symbol right here now I do like to add a bit of a stroke to round this off because it is quite a thin shape right here and the edges so just select a stroke as well ideally the same color so the same brown right here just make that a stroke and then you can round off the edges in the stroke panel by using round joins right here and I would turn the weight down quite a bit so it's not too thick of a stroke kind of like this but there we go we've got a symbol created it looks very nice if used in these sorts of designs so just paste that in between right here it's nice to sort of vary the size as well so you'd have some smaller ones you could have some some bigger ones in there three sort of in a cluster look quite nice so we could for example group these now Control g and just drag this around the design so hold down alt to duplicate it now we can put that in here into this gap and we could put one of them over here next to the letter v and there's another gap over here and now we can just use some singular ones and paste them where necessary so just want to fill out some of the gaps make this look a bit nicer a bit more interesting and don't overdo it but you know overall we're filling the design out making it look more interesting and i think we're definitely getting there now and now one last step that we can take to take this design up a tiny notch further is to add a texture effect so a quick way to do that is select all of your objects hit Control the G to group them and then head over to the transparency panel and then you want to click make mask right here untick the clip option and then select this empty white box so now we're within the opacity mask and anything we add here will be erased from our design so let's add a texture file by heading to file and clicking place let's use texture 19 for example once you click on a texture file then you get this little box symbol and you can draw it out like so there you go make sure you cover the entire design and once you've let go as you can see when we zoom in there is this texture effect being applied and this is going to be sort of erased from the letters so that the t-shirt color shines through now one thing to remember here bear in mind that you have to click out of the transparency mask again so we're inside of it still right here if you click back onto the design then we can move things around again don't get stuck in that mask it's going to drive you crazy because nothing will work so if you drag this off the artboard as you can see the gray color of adobe illustrator actually shines through so that is what we wanted and we can still always head back into the transparency panel and move this texture file around which is really really handy if you want to learn how to create hundreds of designs with adobe illustrator in just a few minutes make sure to check out this tutorial next where we'll walk you through the entire process